Hi students, this is Ms. Ty here. In this video, we will review questions numbers one through six of the January 2024 Geometry Regions. Grab a notebook and pencil and let's get started. Before we get started, I wanted us to take a quick look at the reference sheet so you can see what information is available to you. This is the standard reference sheet that you will use for the 2024 regions. This reference sheet is going to change by June of 2025, but for right now, you're going to need to use this reference sheet. If we notice, the only geometry related information we have is the area of a triangle, area of a parallelogram. You have information about the circle. We have area, circumference here. We have the general prism, volume equals base times height, cylinder, sphere. So basically anything with area, volume, perimeter, we have quite a few formulas here for you. We also have the Pythagorean theorem. Other than that, there's not much here in regards to trigonometry, right? We do you have one radians equals 180 over pi and how to go from degrees to radians. Uh, but that's really it. So a lot of the trig formulas and information you're going to have to memorize. Just giving you a heads up on that. So let's go ahead and get started. Question number one, which expression is equal to sine 30? In general, there's a rule that the sine of A is equal to the cosine of B. What that means is if I have a right triangle, meaning one of the angles is a 90 degree angle, and then we have two remaining angles that are complementary, let's say this is 30 degrees and this is 60 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is going to be equal to the cosine of 60 degrees. Let's take a look at the sides. In any 30, 60, 90 triangle, the side opposite 30 will be 1. The side opposite 60 is root 3, and the hypotenuse is 2. So this is our 1 root 3, 2 triangle, and it always accompanies the 30, 60, 90 triangle. Remember, if triangles are similar, you can scale it up. So this can be 2, 2 root 3, and 4. They can be 5, 5 root 3, and 10, and so on and so forth. So if we take a look, since we know that the sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse, the the sine of 30 degrees here is 1 over 2, so that's 1 half. But the cosine of 60 degrees is going to be the side that's adjacent to 60, which is also going to be 1, and the hypotenuse will be 2. So 1 half equals 1 half. So in this problem, it says which expression is equivalent to the sine of 30 degrees. We know that it's going to be the cosine of 60 degrees. We didn't really need to do any math for this. As long as you remember the rule that the sine of A equals the cosine of B, you will get this question correct. Let's continue. Number two. In the diagram of triangle SRA below, line segment KP is drawn such that angle SKP, which is this angle right here, and angle SRA are congruent. We call these corresponding angles. We also know that angle S is congruent onto itself. And notice angle S is present in both of these triangles. So as of right now, since we can prove that two angles in both triangles are congruent, we can see that these two triangles are similar. Now let's label our diagrams. If SK is 10, SP is 8, and PA is 6, what is the length of KR to the nearest tenth? I went ahead and pulled out the triangles so you can see them separately. So we will label our triangles accordingly. So we have 10 over here, 8 over here, 14 over here, and we're going to label line segment SR 10 plus X. Since we were able to prove that two corresponding angles in both triangles are congruent, these two triangles are similar. Therefore, corresponding sides are proportional. This means we can set up a proportion to solve this problem. We will have 10 over 8, right? So I use the slant side on the left over the slant side on the right of the smaller triangle is equivalent to 10 plus X over 14. This is the slant side of the bigger triangle on the left over the slant side of the bigger triangle on the right. Now that we have our two ratios, we're going to cross multiply. We have eight times 10 plus X equals 10 times 14. So eight times 10 is 80 plus 8x equals 140. Our next step is to subtract 80 on both sides. So we have 8x equals 60. Finally, we will divide by 8 on both sides. So to find the value of x, we need to divide 60 by 8. 8 into 60 goes 7 times. We will have a remainder of 4. 40 divided by 8 is 5. Therefore, line segment kr is equivalent to 7.5. Let's continue. 
A rectangle is graphed on the set of axes below. A reflection over which line would carry the rectangle onto itself. When I think of this type of question, it's almost like identifying what is the line of symmetry. Because once you identify the line of symmetry, when you reflect the rectangle over that line, you will get the exact same rectangle. So you can find a vertical line of symmetry or a horizontal line of symmetry. I will take a look at the answer choices to determine if I want to identify a vertical line or a horizontal line. Notice all of the answer choices begin with y equals. Anytime you have y equals a constant, you're going to end up with a horizontal line. So let's identify the horizontal line that will serve as the line of symmetry. This rectangle is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight units in height, right? So I'm going to divide eight by two and that's four. And my line of symmetry will be right around here. So what is the equation of that line? Let's take a look. So this is one and then two. So that is the equation y equals two. So if we reflected the rectangle over the line y equals two, we would get the exact same rectangle. So choice one is the correct answer. Just a heads up, I knew that three and four were incorrect because these equations are going to yield diagonal lines and we didn't really want a diagonal line. We wanted a horizontal line. Let's continue. Number four, the surface of the roof of a house is modeled by two congruent rectangles with dimensions 40 by 16 feet as shown below. These diagrams are just giving you two different perspectives, but as you can see, a roof of a house, you're gonna have this part Part of the roof on the left and the part of the roof on the right and the two rectangles are congruent so to find the total area we're going to multiply 40 by 16 that's going to be the area of one of the rectangles that area is 640 but remember there are two rectangles so we're going to multiply a times two so now we have 1280 square feet as the area of the two rectangles the problem states that roofing shingles are sold in bundles. Each bundle covers 33 and a third square feet. What is the minimum number of bundles that must be purchased to completely cover both rectangular sides of the roof? We can divide 1280 by 33 and a third to determine the number of bundles that will be needed. This is the same thing as saying 1280 divided by 100 over three. And we know when we divide by a fraction, we keep, change, flip. So we have 1280 times three divided by 100. I will cancel out this zero right here. And then we will have 128 divided by 10, which is 12.8. So our final answer is going to be 12.8, right? That's 128 divided by 10 times three. When we multiply 12.8 times three, we end up with 38.4. Recall that the question asks, what is the minimum number of bundles that must be purchased to completely cover both rectangular sides of the roof? We can't really purchase 38.4 bundles. So we're going to have to round up to 39. So answer choice three is the correct answer. Let's continue. Number five, which equation represents a line that is perpendicular to the line whose equation is y minus 3x equals 4? Recall that the slope of perpendicular lines are opposite reciprocals. What that means is if one slope is positive, the other one's going to be negative. And if one slope is one third, the other slope will be three over one. So let's first rewrite the original equation in slope intercept form. So I'm going to add 3x to both sides. Now we have y equals 3x plus 4. Since the slope m of the original equation is 3, the slope of the perpendicular line will be negative 1 third. Again, we can express 3 as a fraction. So your first step is to find the reciprocal of three over one, which is one over three. And then step two is to simply find the opposite sign. Since three is positive, the slope of the perpendicular line is going to be negative. So we're looking for an equation with a slope of negative one third. So answer choice one is the correct answer. Let's continue. Number six, a vertical mine shaft is modeled in the diagram below. At a point on the ground 50 feet from the top of the mine, a ventilation tunnel is dug at an angle of 47 degrees. What is the length of the tunnel to the nearest foot. When we look at this diagram, we have a right triangle here, which means we can use trigonometry to solve. We have an angle of 47 degrees. We have a line segment that's 50 feet long, 
and we're looking for the hypotenuse. Notice the 50 foot line segment is adjacent to the angle of 47 degrees. So which trig ratio incorporates the line segment that's adjacent to the angle and the hypotenuse that is cosine. So cosine of 47 degrees equals adjacent over hypotenuse, which is 50 feet over X. I like to turn this into a proportion by placing cosine 47 degrees over one. We now have X times the cosine of 47 degrees equals one times 50, which is 50. To solve for X, we will divide both sides of this equation by the cosine of 47 degrees. We will cancel that out, and now we need to find our final answer. Let's take a look at our calculator to get the final answer. So let's calculate. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. That's really important because we're not talking about radians here. So you're gonna click on mode and you're gonna go down to ensure that it's in degrees, okay? So now we have 50 divided by the cosine of 47 degrees. And let's see what our answer is. We have 73.31395928. But because the question is telling us to round to the nearest foot, our final answer is going to be 73 feet. So choice four is the correct answer. If you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.